Hello, it's Jason. It's early April 2023 and I wanted to talk a little bit about apples. Uh, I know this isn't the most exciting place to be pointing my camera, but I wanted to show that right here in this empty space when I first moved into this house two years ago, there was an apple tree there. It wasn't in a very good location because immediately next to it, right in this area, which is now open, was an old chicken coop. It was about six feet by eight feet. The apple tree was extremely close to that chicken coop. It was poorly placed. I didn't know the variety. It was about four feet tall, but it wasn't in the greatest health. And on top of that, it was suffering from fire blight. So it just had way too many strikes against it. I decided to rip it out of the ground. I got rid of the wood uh, to make sure that I didn't spread that fire blight to any of the other trees. And um, there's fruit tree math. You take out one tree, and you say, well, I'm gonna replace it one for one. No, that's not what you're gonna do. You're gonna replace it with more than one. At least that's how my fruit tree math works. So I went from the west side of my orchard, which is where the tree, where the apple tree was when I first moved in, and I decided to plant my new apple trees on the east side of the orchard. And I decided to do it in a very specific way. I decided to espelier or espelier the apple trees. Um, I have three. If you look here, I've got a winter banana over here on the left. The leaves are just starting to open up. I have an Anna in the center, which is my early ripening apple, which will give me fruit probably in Jan uh, June. And then over here I have a King David, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, because there's there's not a whole lot going on over there, but it, it, there's some, some potential that I'm excited about. So when I decided to espalier these trees, I wanted to use this fence line. Now the fence, it's not the prettiest fence in the world. It's the neighbor's fence and uh, I would love to cover it up with, with greenery. And um, so that accomplishes one goal. And the second thing is here that I wasn't gonna use this space because if you look over to the left, you'll see I have a gate that um, I can't plant anything large in front of that gate or next to the gate along the fence um, because I just wouldn't be able to get through. So I could either put it along the fence or not do anything with the fence at all. So of course I decided to use this technique. And um, the way that I, espaliered these trees is a little different than what you would read about online as far as how to do it properly. So this is the, the proper way to do it. If I can explain it here, I did not do it the proper way. I did not do it using this method, but it's, uh, hang with me here for a second. So you buy a tree and you chop it down to maybe 18 inches or two feet, and depending on where you want your first branches to sprout off. And you'll have, let's say three sprouts, one going to the right, one going to the left, one going straight up and you'll train those right and left branches to be your first layer and then the sprout in the center will grow up and the next year you'll cut it again at that second year and then you'll allow a sprout to go to the left and to the right and straight up and you'll do that year after year after year until you get all of your layers or all of your levels possibly a four maybe five year investment as far as time is concerned all the meanwhile, you're not getting any delicious fruit. So I decided against that. I decided to do the non-traditional route. When I went to the store and I bought these, these are Dave Wilson bare root trees that I bought in our dormant season in January. I picked them up at a local nursery here in San Diego called Walter Anderson. I specifically looked for trees that had good branches that were already going, um, if you will, north to south, because that's the way my trees are positioned. I knew that I was going to shave the tree down on the front side, which is the side facing me, and I was going to cut off all the branches on the back. So I, I was looking for trees that had a very, very specific shape, that had very strong branching going uh, basically symmetrical from one another. And I found that in this Anna. I couldn't find a better example to show you than this Anna apple. Now I know that the leaves are coming in, so it's a little bit harder to see, but if I come down here to the bottom, uh, you'll notice that I got two pretty good branches, the left one, is a little bit thicker in diameter than the right one, but nonetheless, they are uh, making up my first layer here. And as I come up, you'll notice that not only are the branches approximately the same in diameter um, on either side, but they're also equally uh, close to one another. You don't have one that's like uh, six or eight inches higher than the other. So it, aesthetically, it looks very nice as well. Uh, that's the true for the third level and then I decided to go four high and behind the leaves and the fruit you can see that um, I've got that fourth level going across there. I also have a gigantic Anna apple that's growing. This is the biggest one I have so far. This is what fruit looks like when you're growing in zone 10A, 10B. So if I come back and look at my winter banana, you can see the structure a little bit better because it has not leafed out as much. 
and you'll notice that um, I was somewhat successful in picking out a good tree, meaning my first layer here, uh, I've got two good branches that are going straight across. This branch that I have on the left-hand side um, didn't quite bend the way I wanted it to, so I was able to cheat and use this fencing material back behind. If I had used a wire rope going across, I would have been um, really restricted in where I could tie my branches off. But instead, I used this fencing material. I've actually used this fencing material around a lot of my orchard um, on, the, on the north side of the orchard. When I built these fences, I built it out of um, pressure-treated lumber, and then I went ahead and added this fencing material that comes on a roll. So I used that over here on my trees as well, so I'd have multiple places to tie off to. And that was really important because, again, I was buying a tree that was already somewhat well-established. The branches were already there, and they were already doing their thing. And this is a great example. This branch was not going to go straight across. I actually tried bending it a little too much, and it started to snap on me. And so this was the first season. This was last year. And I went and I wrapped it in parafilm to protect it as it healed back over. And it did, but I never tried bending the branch back again. This is just what it's going to look like, and I'm just going to have to live with that. Um, again, I've got the same number of branches on the right and on the left. They're not necessarily symmetrical with one another, but that's okay. They are spaced out enough to uh, do what I need them to do. So this is winter banana. This one is uh, ripening, I'd say, September... Uh, maybe they'll hang on the tree until October. I was eating winter banana apples uh, until early October. They were starting to get a little mushy at this point, and then I picked them all off. I only let a couple go to fruit since it was the first year on the ground. All right, so now Anna and winter banana have been in the ground for, uh, now this is their second year, and this is the King David, and this is uh, my new addition. It's the last spot that I had available for this technique, and um, it actually wasn't my first choice. My first choice was a sundowner. It's a Crips Red, it's a sister apple to the Pink Lady. Pink Lady is Crips Pink, and I love Pink Lady apples. They are my absolute favorite, but I can get a Pink Lady apple in the store. So I didn't want to double up and get something that I could buy at a grocery store. So I decided to go with that sister apple. And I looked everywhere in January, but every single nursery was either sold out or they never got their shipment of Sundowner apples to begin with. And I realized through some um, message boards that I'm active on that for some reason, the crop of sundowner apples was just non-existent. Maybe the, the row that they were being grown in got wiped out or whatever happened. Everything else seemed to be in stock, but sundowner, for some reason, really hard to get your hands on. So I settled on a King David, and I'll explain why. King David and sundowner are, are both late ripening, meaning they'll give you fruit somewhere in November. And um, I like that because my goal in this orchard is successive ripening. And also the King David, as far as its flavor is concerned, I've never actually tried it, uh, but the flavor ratings are like off the chart. King David does require a pollinizer and I don't have another late ripening apple to pollinize it with. But when I went to my San Diego, California rare fruit grower Scion exchange back in January, I found a Sundowner Scion. And so instead of just grafting on one Scion, I tried chip budding. And I don't know if I'm successful because if these chips do take, they are going to um, show signs of waking up um, in a few weeks, meaning not now. And um, that's, that's the reality of a late ripening uh, <laughs> tree, you know, late to ripen, late to wake up. And so my plan, if this all goes according to plan, I'm gonna have King David on the right-hand side, which are the branches that I left. And then on the, on the left-hand side, I left a couple King David branches down here at the bottom because I didn't have enough um, chip buds to go all the way down the tree. But my plan is to have one side King David, the other side Sundowner. They will pollinize each other. They will ripen at the same time. And, uh, Actually seeing the results of this may be a few years down the road, but I'm excited at the possibility of um, Of having two late ripening apples on one tree So all signs are pointing to success that that bud is swelling up nicely But again, I'm not gonna know for sure for another couple weeks, maybe another month um, The King David is starting to wake up If I come down here uh, One of the branches that snapped off prior to me even purchasing it is starting to come alive down here That makes sense. The energy comes up from the trunk um, and, and hits those first branches first. And uh, I'll see signs of the rest of the tree waking up real soon, but for now, this is all I got. So this is my, 
my technique that I've used, again, I did not do the proper technique if there ever was one where you cut the tree off and year after year you let another uh, growth emerge and, and you train it up the trellis. I didn't do that. I cheated. I bought the trees uh, basically as is. I cut the front and back off. I stuck them on a fence. I tied them to some fencing material. And um, if I didn't tell you that, you might not even know I did that because in my opinion, that Anna apple looks pretty good. So I'm hoping that my winter banana and my King David can follow and I could have three nice espaliered apple trees. When I started off, I just had one.